It's Sophie for Hit the Floor, and I'm here with Scouting for Girls. How are you? Very good. Good, thank you. Good. good. How are you? Very well, thank I'm you. going to have to keep doing this, aren't I? It's like the tennis. Yeah. Talking about tennis, are you looking forward to the Olympics? It's starting today, or the ceremonies today? Yeah, really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, it should be yeah. great. You know, it looks like the opening ceremony is going to be uh, something special, so... Great. You're a big Duran Duran fan? Yeah. <laughs> Duran Duran Duran. <laughs> uh, and we're playing on Sunday at Hyde Park. Amazing. So, yeah, we only found out literally a week ago. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be insane because it's about 50,000 people. And it's, oh. yeah, it's, yeah, I'm very excited. We did, we actually did the openings. No, what did we do? The Olympic handover when uh, it went from Beijing to London and they uh, set up a big, huge stage in front of Buckingham Palace and, yeah, it was very exciting. So you're fully involved, really. You're a big part of the Olympics, let's yeah. be honest. We're almost professional <laughs> Olympians, in <laughs> yeah. fact, you could say. <laughs> We're in Team GB yeah. Yeah. in a kind of non-physical sporting way. We what don't are your strengths, though? Could you say sporting? What, 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 sporting? Oh, watching? Uh, yeah, watching. <laughs> I'm good at criticising, yeah. uh, saying, come on, hit it harder, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, that's about it, really. Yeah. yeah. I'd do some weightlifting whilst <laughs> watching. Yes. I can uh, manage that. Your biceps are huge, aren't they? Massive, yeah. yeah massive guns. <laughs> right, we should probably talk about the music. Yeah. That's what we're here for. So your third album is yeah. out, 3rd of September. Yeah. Now, I heard that at first it was going to be a concept album. So what concepts did you actually think about doing before you realised that wasn't going to work? Uh, well, originally, the idea was to have, like, a narration going through it, like, with a whole story. Right. Uh, and essentially what happened is uh, we didn't, we'd already had some songs already, which was supposed to go on a previous album, like a deluxe edition of the last one. And then people at our label changed. This is a really boring story. Let's spice it up. Okay. Spice up. Okay. And basically, yeah, we, uh, we wrote some better songs, essentially, uh, which we wanted to put, which couldn't fit in this concept album. Right. So we're still going to do, it's not a concept, it's like a story album. Okay. I don't want to say too much because it's, it's going to be amazing oh. next time. But what essentially it turned out was we had so many, what we thought were the best songs we'd ever written. And we didn't want to just, put together a concept album for the point of it so we just put out we've got this album which is i think the, like saying it's two years and it we've had spent so long doing this but it it's worth the wait i feel okay. now during that two years do you look at the charts and like watch potential competition people that are kind of dipping into what you do in terms of your niche and sound or do you just get on with what you're doing just concentrate on that i think it's best to just get on with it keep your head down and just do what we're good at. That's great. That's what? Great. Greg, <laughs> Greg hasn't bought a record since yeah. 1997. You what? <laughs> you, YouTube? Was that I, I am obsessed with what's going on in the mm. music industry. I'm obsessed with, with pop music. I love pop music and I'm obsessed with everything that goes on and what's being played on the radio. Uh, partly because it's kind of what we do and partly because I'm a massive fan. I've always been a massive fan of pop music. So I, I, But I don't really see it as competition. I remember reading an interview with Moby and he said that as soon as he stopped seeing like when he was unsigned and he used to think oh this rubbish music you know as soon as he stopped seeing other bands and artists competition that's when he sort of became successful okay. but I think you've got to know what's going on and like you know the record which we've done we've kept elements of what made us popular back in 2007 like the songwriting but you've got to make sure the production sounds like it can go on the radio in 2012 and mm. so we've had like summertime is quite you know, the drums, you just like the production on it, it does feel like it, it belongs in 2012. Mm. Talking about production, I think you worked with five different people. Mm. Did you worry about the album not being cohesive because of that? Or Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, really. Because like the whole point, you know, one of the reasons the whole, like, I'm still a big fan of an album and I love it to tell like a story in, you know, to get an idea of what's going on in a band's head in that space, you know, over those two years. But I think the way we play and we play in kind of a unique way and the way I sing and the way we harmonise and the songs we write, because the songs are all written by me and then worked on by us, yeah. that they still sound like, it's going to say, it sounds like a Scout for Girls record mm. and it feels like a record, but it, you know, it's got enough in there to keep you interested right to the end. In terms of the lyrics, do you explain to these guys like what it's about Philly, like the stories behind it, or do you keep it vague? Like, does he tell you, like, the... He does, but we just don't listen to really, <laughs> no, not interested. Yeah, no, he does sort of go on, you know, 
quite a bit about those. But they, they, they're kind of self-explanatory, the songs, you know. I don't know what I bother. It's out of the brotherhood, eh? Where's that gone? Do, do you know what I do? Most of the time, they make up rude versions <laughs> to the songs. Who does okay? Can we hear one today? No. no, no. no? They're, 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 they're not for broadcast. Not oh. for broadcast. Yeah, really rude versions of all the songs. <laughs> and and they think it's thing. hilarious. He they shakes his hilarious. head. You can see him sniggering a little bit. <laughs> he loves it. Yeah. 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 That's, that's it. No, I, I, one of the things which I did definitely with this album is I really worked on uh, the lyrics, keeping them pop but keeping them relevant and I think going back to what is you know one of the biggest changes over the last five or six years is music has become so the lyrics have become so so strong Mm. you know like if you look at things you know like Professor Green or Tiny Temper it's as you know it's as much about the melody but it's it's more about the lyric Mm. you know than than anything else so we've had to up our game how, how how would you say you have changed the lyrics though in terms of how you write it the techniques or how you record them what's the what's the main difference well when i first got into music i was into like oasis like that we sort of we were at school when Britpop took off yeah. and oasis have got some great lyrics but they never they're not like the way lyrics now are so clever mm-hmm. they you know they're full of like you know real wit real like you know, or sometimes almost kind of like this sounds really wanky, but like shakes. Can I say that? No, you already have. So it's out there. But it's that like sometimes it's kind of really some of the stuff which some people are doing that is almost like Shakespearean mm. in a kind of the way he used to play with words and, and mix things up and give double meaning. You know, and it's so clever. And so I've tried to do that with some of these records and really work on 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 the lyric. Yeah. In terms of Whereas before, I used to go, she's so lovely, she's so lovely, she's so lovely. <laughs> but it was simple and sweet, wasn't it? I still think like they were... <laughs> Oh, there we go. Simple. Oh, simple. <laughs> I still but they were some you know, she's pretty she's flirty, turn thirty and that the age of girl gets really dirty. I think they were like well, I've always tried to write quite pop culture, mm. kind of like from bands like Squeeze and Madness from that, that sort of angle. What, what albums were you listening to when you were making the record? Were there any that you can hear have informed the sound of it that you maybe didn't expect they would, or any weird ones, perhaps? Um, no. 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 I'm, no. I, I think we. I've listened to albums of bands which sounded like that still connected with people. Like so, I really loved. I was into the Land Del Rey album, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, like, a great band sounding, and it's a classic sounding record, but it still sounds pop, and it yeah. still sounds, it's still accessible now, and bands like uh, Noah and Noel, I really enjoyed that record, that's an amazing record. Uh, so, they were, they were sort of two, I, I don't, it's kind of hot, I don't, we weren't influenced by by that, but I was, that's some of the things I was listening Might to. infiltrate without you knowing it, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Now, I think you record some things on your iPhone. I think you've recorded things in a wardrobe even. Were there any unusual places this time around? Uh, we were using this one studio in Richmond called State of the Art, which is an amazing studio. Uh, it's got it's beautiful, like, amazing piano, and it's got loads of old vintage. It's got like an old Abbey Road desk, like a Beatles desk there. It's like worth, like I don't know, it's worth more than a house. It's like worth 400 grand or something like <laughs> that. And... Uh, but basically the vocals, which our producer always insisted, uh, to do them in the kitchen. And so the owner of the studio came in and he's going, I can't believe you're going to, we've spent hundreds of thousands of pounds soundproofing that vocal booth, got acousticians in it, and you're in the only room in the entire place that isn't soundproof, that's got like a, like it had a, like an air vent out because it was, it was on the flight path and you could hear planes coming over. So that was a, uh, that was one place. We've recorded stuff outside as well, uh, all over, mm. really. But, uh, yeah. How does it work generally? Do you go in separate rooms and work on your parts, or does one person start with something and then you jam together and see what happens? Yeah, we kind of, Roy comes up with the concept, then we've got our own little studio, so we all get in and we, we just rehearse them and play and play and play until we get something we all feel is right. And then you'll go into the studio and do your parts separately, and the producer will say, well, start chopping up things change this and do that and that and that's really how it works and that's how you get 
your finished sound. So all this, all the stuff that you've done in the studio uh, and the recording studio and our studio, it all sort of chops and turns into a piece that you're happy with, and that's what we perform live. So they do usually start off the songs very different yeah. from how it's how it usually ends. Are you guys ever happy with the finished results, though, or are you perfectionists and you always listen back and go, "Oh, we should still tweak that," or "I wish we'd done that"? Um, I don't know. I, I'm always really excited, and really. It's been when you get the physical copy of the CD in your hands and you put it on, and the first proper listen to the actual CD, not like the mixes you've got sent through. I think I'm always just blown away by it. I mean, there's maybe a couple of bits you go, "Well, we should done that," or but then we can do that on the live side. So exactly, you're always happy. If you're happy with it then, yeah, if you're happy with it then you've got to not think like that and just sort of go with it. We, uh, the great thing about this album, we had so much time. Yeah. Mm. And so we could go back and and change things and make sure that we were completely happy with it. Like, I can sometimes, because it goes from, like, I'll demo, demo the songs up to a reasonably good level, but never to the the level of what you actually need to do it. And then we'll take all those bits and then we'll re-record them and make them sound even better. And then we'll get we mix and then we'll come back to them. And so can, and that some of these songs have taken, you know, we've worked on them for like a year and a half. So I, I think, you know, they're about as good as they're going to get, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm I'm really excited. Like there is some songs on there on the album and not just the singles. There's some ob- obvious big singles, but there are some tracks on this album, which I think some of the best, the uh, best songs we've ever done and just and it, like the last track on the album is this big sort of five minute epic tune that's is my favorite and it's, it's just a beautiful sounding record as well i think it's a great a great lyric and a great melody but it's just a beautiful sound everything the strings and the drums and it's it's exactly what we wanted to do with this record how easy was it to pick the first single off the record not easy from that expression. It's easy because I, I I loved it from the start. It was a, it was a song we've been playing for quite a while uh, before, but we never really warmed to it really. We we never played it. I, we never played it. Like, I but demoed together, it. we played it together a few times. We'd gone for it, and, th- and it was sort of like a uh, uh, yeah, not sure sort of thing. And then obviously Roy went uh, to LA to work with uh, some of the record label who also do some writing and. Uh, played it to them and, and they said, you know, we really think this is a great song. So we just worked on it and worked on it. I wasn't even going to play it to yeah. them. Like, I was asked to, uh, I was asked to write, uh, a couple of years ago, write a song for Ollie Merz, write some, and I did some writing with him. Uh, and this was one of the ideas which I had. And I kept it, but I thought, I never really sort of thought that summertime, I don't, it was very different to what the final version was. And when I went to LA and played them all the songs, I was like, I've got to play. Like, we went for all the songs. And go, oh, these are great. These are great. And I wrote one song with the guys out there in LA, uh, and then it was literally the last song. I said, I've got to play you this just because people kill me if I don't. He reckons it's a hit record. I'm not sure. Mm. And so I played it to them, and they said, Yeah, it sounds like a sounds like a first single. So you don't mess with genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You agree with that, then? <laughs> yeah, really. Unfortunately, he does. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when you write for other people like Alexander Burke and One Direction, do you have to put yourself in a different mindset or do you change your environment so you're writing something that will fit to them? How do you do it? Uh, yeah, in in a way, I still think that it, it depends. Sometimes I'll write something, like with One Direction, it's a little bit younger. Mm. The, and you can write, uh, I think they're changing a bit now, but like the song I did for One Direction was kind of a real fun almost like bubblegum pop sort of song and it was and it's like it's i'm really i'm really proud of it because it's a great it's a great pop song and uh i've seen them play it and the fans love it as well so it's uh it's good and i think like with scaling for girls it we've sort of we're trying to move it on from that and try and make it a bit a bit more bandy like we never thought i swear we never (laughs) thought we'd be a pop song like a pop band like we we genius we, again. We started off as like I honestly thought we'd be like if we ever got a record deal, it'd be like Bell and Sebastian. We'd be like on a little indie label making little twee pop music, like she's so lovely, and and you know maybe be able to eke out a career for like ten years, like because we had a real hardcore fan base before we signed a deal, and like the fact that the record went to number one and we had all these hits and we suddenly been playing like Wembley and that. I never ever foresaw that. <laughs> and I suppose in some ways it took us down a route where we became like a pop band and, and like we've loved doing that. And I think this record we've tried to 
step a bit more towards being a band. But it's still like we like we are still a pop band. Yeah. So do you get more joy out of performing, say, Reading and Leeds Festival than you would like a commercial like Tea from the Beach or something like that? Is that more what you'd want to do? No, I've never done Reading. Yeah. Do you want to, though? Is I that with that? I would. Yeah. I'm at the back. Yeah. Oh, for things here, yeah. <laughs> you, you live near Reading, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't live too far. I've been to see it at home. I think you, 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 it's nice to do a diverse sort of a bit of everything because yeah. we've done things for sort of... Um, you know, indie radio stations and all that where it's you know very musical and then we've done yeah like you say t4 on the beach which is you know everybody happy and clapping and <laughs> jumping around i think so, there are very few bands who cr- who've yeah. crossed like the who've gone from being like a band who can play like glastonbury yeah. to playing t4 on the beach or like you know download next year you I mean, know, yeah. play with <laughs> download <laughs> I'll we started off. We on like we started off when we were seventeen, eighteen. It was quite a heavy rock band. Mm. Uh, so we got it in us. We got yeah, yeah. We <laughs> got it. You look at some of the guys playing Download these days. Yeah. Flipping hell, they're like getting on with Zimmer frames. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but I yeah, I, I think we just love playing live. We just love like we've done it. It's the only thing we've really done. We've been in this band longer than we lot. haven't if that makes okay. sense. We've been playing music together. <laughs> that hurt my head for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's all... it's the it's, We just love, you know, we love making music together. We love playing music together. So, yeah, we're really lucky. We're really lucky to be able to still, st- you know, still make a living from this. Nothing makes you miss the days of Iceland and Carphone Warehouse or anything like that? Yeah. Do you know what I found? I went through some old stuff and I found my Iceland name badge. I've put that up. I've got my like a little car phone warehouse like sign which I stole, <laughs> and uh, the shop's closing. I'm just putting this down, uh, and then uh, like my ice and name badge, and it's quite nice to, because I, I like we did all those jobs, uh, part time because we believed we could get a deal. Oh, that's good. You got something to fall back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still got the badge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's you know, and it took us like ten years to get a deal from when we we started, and we. Well, I think one of the proudest achievements I've ever had is the fact that we believed in ourselves enough to carry on yeah. uh, and get a deal and 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 make and do what we love for a living because it's such a it, you know it's it's rare. And yeah, a lot of people don't weird. get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, so we've made really the most lucky. of it. It's quite hard these days as well. I think it's harder than ever to make it as a band and actually make money out yeah. of it as well. Oh, as a band, it's like it's. Almost I reckon impossible. it's near as impossible yeah. to get a deal these days, just because of how music is and the the whole industry is in a is kind of in a in a difficult place anyway mm. with with uh, illegal downloading, uh, labels are getting smaller. There's still there's still a great industry and there's still great opportunities for musicians and writers so uh i think you just have but to be in like you know no one's listening to guitar bands at the moment mm. so uh or piano bands or i'm in, trying to change that, that though with, with oh, yeah. what i write i keep yeah. trying to push like rock bands it, it and will, stuff it will happen yeah. it's just it's just a matter of uh you know it's just a cycle and something mm-hmm. will happen you know the music like pop music will become more and more generic and um, and bland, and then somebody like uh, there'll be some kid in his room writing the next Live Forever or yeah. the next You Look Good on the Dance Floor, you know, and then that will happen, and then that will bring through like another, you know, change. It, I think, I actually think my theory on this is like we're in this cycle at the moment where it usually these things happen over 20 years, so at the moment it's kind of where, like in the 80s where pop was massive and dance yeah. music was massive, and the next band which will come through is going to be like a dance orientated band who would have a bit of a bit of you know a bit of the dance and a bit of guitar and then that will come through and that will be like how in the, the 80s it was like uh happy mondays and like yeah. stone roses that sort of that sort of feel will come through that's my prediction oh. i don't know where we sit on that <laughs> yeah. i was going to say buggered <laughs> yeah most, most of my predictions come true not that, yeah. I don't know about so, so don't hold your breath so what are you, what are you predicting i'm not telling you keep it yeah. under my hat you know Eminent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> folk. Yeah, folk. Folk, we've had folk. That's been done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're well, going yeah. Marlin, Mumford oh, Sons. Whatever. Wait, you just wait and see. Okay. Ooh. What do you think? Oh. I, I think rock is going to come back. Yeah. I'm quite confident. There's so many, particularly UK bands as yeah. well, that are coming through now. Daniel Picard is pushing them so Zane Lowe. So. Yeah. And Fern Cotton's playing while she sleeps during the day now, which yeah. is quite big. So. Yeah. 
Do you remember Daniel Peacock as band? What? Yeah, Hexes or no, A, a yeah, with Jason Perry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Loved yeah. A. That was such an amazing band. But it's kind of it's funny because he is as well. I think he really likes pop music. Because A I think was as much a pop band as they yeah. were a rock band. They had some great pop songs, like it's old about melodies, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah, no, it's good. I think it's gonna be an interesting couple of years for music, you know, mm. and I think uh you know, I don't know. You always uh I think you're always privileged just to be playing the game you know and I think you have to really concentrate on doing yeah I think you sometimes have to not get too caught up on what is going on because sometimes you can do like if you're trying to write unless you're like if I'm writing songs for someone and I know it's going to come out in like three months time they're looking for an album the album's going to be there I can see what's on the radio and I go well wait, you can do that but when you're doing a band and we very much look at our band as a proper band talking about what we believe in if you start trying to chase genres it can you might not realise it, but it can take you two years to bring out a record. Yeah. And they, if it if were to come out of like a big sort of, you know, something chasing something which wasn't us, you just have to be completely true to yourself. Yeah, and confident with it. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing. Very confident. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and write good songs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, your new single's got 100,000 views already, which yeah. is pretty good. Two days or something like that. Like, the single, not the last single, the single we did before that, it's got more views than sing- two singles ago. It's been out for two years. It wasn't a very good single. But, uh, <laughs> Let's not remind people of that. <laughs> play the game, man. Play the game. I don't think it had the promotion it deserved. The one before that... The promotion isn't going to The one before that had like 20 million views. But it was a bad video. I'd put on a bit of weight. I'm just putting it out there. It's all about that. That's it's the girth of your stomach that's ruined everything, was it? Not, basically, what happened with this video? We just got loads of girls in bikinis. <laughs> always works. It always works. Like, it's an, I had to tell the label that we had to fight for that. Mm. Do you know these are the people who are in charge of selling music? You wouldn't believe it. You've pissed up a lot of people in this interview, haven't you? <laughs> no. So you've um, you've got Ivan Novella nominations, Brit nominations. You played in front of the England cricket team. Yeah. What do you want this album to achieve? Win something. <laughs> <laughs> no more nominations. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, as long as we can carry on doing what we're doing, I'm I'm happy. So yeah, Every enough s- sales to get another another album. <laughs> That's essentially what we've always believed. Like yeah. we've always tried to just sell enough records so that we can put out another album and. Uh, and pe- you know, and and tour. We love playing live, so that's that's pretty much it. Mm. Okay. And final words from you, perhaps. Yeah, it's all been very lovely. Got a few dates coming up at the end of the year. Check yeah. out our website www.scantforgirls.co.uk and uh, come and see us on tour. It is amazing. What a lovely way to end. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.